Yes, we're still in event 25. Jesus is teaching his disciples Thursday night before the crucifixion. Uh, he's uh, obviously either in the upper room or in the garden with his disciples. And uh, we're at John 15. We first we saw verses 1 through 11, believers' relationship to Christ. Then we saw believers' relationship to each other, verses 12 through 17. And today we're going to look at believers' relationship to the world, verses 18 through 27. In verses 18 and 19, it tells us that the world's going to hate us because it hated him first. And if we were of the world, it would love us <laughs> because it loves its own. Uh, but if we're not of the world, it's because he chose us out of the world. Therefore, the world hates us. Verse 20. Remember the word. A slave is not greater than the master. If they persecuted him, they'll persecute us also. It's because they don't know the one who sent Jesus. Verse 22, if I had not come and spoken to them, they'd not have sin. But now that I've spoken to them, they have no excuse for their sin. If they hate me, uh, they hate the Father. And then he quotes from Psalm 35, uh, verses 19 and Psalm 69, verse 4. And he said, we'll be hated without cause. It's interesting, isn't it? Uh, we typically as Christians do not try to do anything to harm others. And yet they hate us without cause. Verses 26 and 27. The Holy Spirit that I will send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, will bear witness of me. Now watch this and you shall wear, bear witness of me because you have been with me from the beginning. Well, although he was talking to his disciples, should we not also bear witness of him? Should we not be outspoken about him? Uh, after all, we only care about the outcome of others. And if the outcome is separation from God in eternal time in hell, do we not have a responsibility and an obligation to share and to witness for him? Uh, I fear that far too many Christians are so worried about political correctness that they're afraid to speak out in behalf of Jesus Christ. I hope that you'll not be one of those. I hope that because the Holy Spirit dwells in you, not only will he bear witness of Christ, but that you'll bear witness of Christ. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great weekend. Well, we do know that you can know that you're going to heaven. Most people say, I hope so. But uh, the scriptures in the book of Romans make it very clear. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, that is, sin is anything that's displeasing to God, and we've all done things displeasing to God. So we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. So we are sinners, but Christ died for us. And then in Romans 5, 6, it says, while we were still helpless, that is, we couldn't do good enough works to earn our way into heaven. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. We were helpless, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We all earned our wages, which is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that means there's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone. But that's not freedom to just continue in sin either. And the way that we receive it is in Romans 10 verse 9. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Well, I hope that you know for certain that you're going to heaven. I hope that you've turned away from sin and self, turned to Jesus alone, who gives by grace eternal life. Yeah, yes, it, there is some surrender involved, and yes, there is a, a turning away from sin, but that's not how we earn heaven. We don't earn it. We, des we get it from him as a gift, and that's what the scripture says clearly. It's by grace and grace alone. God bless you and have a great day.